Excellent. You All right. Sound? Short yes. from Berkel, everybody. Yeah, so uh, sorry for the wait, but uh, here it is. Um, I'm Shors, for uh, the people who don't know me. Uh, I'm uh, in Team 2A, uh, Team 2 Awesome, sorry. Uh, <laughs> you have a mic. Uh, I've been at Ball for uh, two and a half years now, and uh, not surprisingly, I'm an app enthusiast. Now, um, what I did for this, uh, what I would like to start with is I made, I went to the future, and gather some of your uh, 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 feedback, and I will project them right now. What a lame app. Well, that hurts my feelings a bit, honestly. But uh, yeah, everybody is uh, allowed their own opinion, so uh, let's go on to the next one. Maybe that will be better. Ah, I didn't make a lot of money. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. Yeah, as you will see, uh, this talk is not really about money. I'm not so interested in money. <laughs> Um, but maybe I can build that software I'm looking for myself. Okay, so now we're getting somewhere, and that's really interesting. Um, I am actually, uh, I actually wanted to stress that, uh, of course, developers have an advantage in building software, but I think uh, this talk also uh, shows that it's mostly about motivation and dedication. So if you are uh, not a software developer, but somewhere, uh, someone else, uh, someone from HR, uh, you can still do this. So if you want to do something with cucumbers, I don't know, uh, want to make an app for that, go ahead, I would say. Um, to, oh, sorry. to arrive to that conclusion, however, I will first uh, tell a story about how I released my app and uh, what happened there. Uh, then I will talk about the benefits, what I think the benefits are uh, for developing, uh, developing your own apps outside of your job. And then uh, I will talk about, okay, you are interested, uh, what, what are you going to do? How are you going to start? So this is a movie I recorded in late 2014. And um, I hope that you all know uh, uh, Philips U lights because that's what my app is uh, about. And I wrote this small Python script, and here it's uh, it's running, it's uh, changing the color. Somebody made a joke about uh, it being in Amsterdam. I don't know why, <laughs> but uh, at least it worked. So it sort of showed me like I, I bought these lights, and I got very enthusiastic, and I wanted to try out the APIs, and I was okay. Uh, this is actually working. But it's not really user-friendly, of course. It's a user script that also uh, stressed out the light so much that it was sort of confused afterwards. But, okay, that doesn't matter. Then I thought, um, is there a good app to, uh, to change lighting from my Mac? Because I'm always very lazy. This is sort of a rode uh, draad in my presentations, I think. I'm very lazy. So I don't want to take out my phone all the time. And um, I would actually like to, if I, if I sit behind the computer, change my lights in my house from the computer. And turns out there were a few apps, but I wasn't really, uh, I wasn't really overwhelmed by how good they were. So I thought, OK, that's interesting. That's an interesting thing. I will think about it a bit. Then this happened. So I was actually dating this girl, and, she and I, was, I was working a bit towards this app, and she was asking me, like, yeah, can you not just, uh, this, uh, this seems to work well, it was a beta, but okay, she didn't know. And, and she said, can you not release this? I was like, yeah, okay, you, but you, you clearly don't understand the difference between like, having a, a prototype on my computer and actually releasing this to the world. That, that is a big difference, and that's a lot of work. And then this happened. So um, this, I mean, I don't want to set the wrong example or anything. This is the best thing that could ever happen to app developers, because then they can just put in all their stress into, uh, into app development. It's basically lines of code and tears. That's it. <laughs> so <laughs> I, put in, I put in a lot of effort. And I was actually able uh, to, to make this app. Now, this is the point at which you can think, 
the, what a lame app, because this is it. If, the, if you're not impressed, sure. The, that is, uh, this is what my app is, apart from some other screens to, uh, to manage, uh, manage your configuration and stuff. But, um, yeah, so if you, ca you, can, you can see, you can change the colors, you can change the intensity, and you can change the brightness, basically, per light, if there are colors, colors and otherwise you can change the brightness. Uh, I, I get very enthusiastic when I see this, uh, because that means I can be lazy. Great. Now, there was one thing I couldn't do, and I tried really hard, but it would ruin the app, and that was uh, design my own logo. So I actually paid uh, a guy from, uh, from Pakistan, I believe, $15 <laughs> to create a logo. I was very impressed by this. Uh, he, I gave him some cues, and then he made this. It was very nice. Afterwards, I found out that it was not or that it was asymmetrical, but then I thought, okay, it was $15. Well, what the heck? And then there was one more thing I needed before I could release it, and there was a name. Uh, of course, I had a name during development because you have to name your pro pro projects, and I was very impressed by myself, my naming skills, because I made an app which is a menu for you, <laughs> so I will call it menu. And man, did that feel good. <laughs> but that when I w so I, d I went into the process of releasing my app. And then I, of course, had to show it to Apple. And they were more like this. Meh. They said, yeah, it's, it's very confusing when pe people try to pronounce it. It's, uh, it's shit, basically. They didn't write that, but uh, that's basically what they said. So I, I said, OK, this is a very big, powerful company. I'm not going to be able to uh, convince them that this is, uh, this is brilliant. So I will just change it. And then there is my app in the Mac App Store. So this was actually, uh, I, I was able to release it with that one change, uh, and I was, uh, I was able to go and sell it. I also um, made this Twitter page for, uh, so you have to provide a support page for people to visit so that you can give some, uh, some customer support. So I made, this, uh, I made this page, I used the logo everywhere because th that was the only asset I had, as you can see. <laughs> um, and then, well, so I, I was basically, uh, from that point on, I was, uh, every day I was checking uh, the sales numbers. And after three days, um, I got this. So I sold 19 apps in one day. Oh, that, was, that was so cool. And um, I, I was actually wondering, okay, this is, this is nice, but what happened? You know, it is not all of a sudden that uh, something does not just gain traction. Um, so I, I went to, to uh, search myself on Google. I normally never do that. Uh, but I found out that there's this German, uh, German blog, small German blog, I think. Uh, and they, um, they featured me. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I mean, seeing your own name in German context, that's <laughs> <laughs> one of the takeaways. Um, but, uh, so, okay, I went on, and, and actually for, uh, for half a month or so, nothing really happened. And I kept Googling myself at that point, and I found this. So even the Spanish people, uh, right? Was it Spanish? Yes. <laughs> I think so. Uh, they were interested. <laughs> Is it Ito Italian? <laughs> Sorry. Did I, did I uh, make angry faces? No? Okay, good. Uh, so I found this, but this didn't actually, this is not a very important blog apparently because no, nobody bought the app from here. But also this, uh, Germans again. Turns out Germans are my friend. Uh, <laughs> that's, uh, that yeah, that's good to know. Uh, and then uh, when this happened, I checked out my dashboard and I had 95, um, uh, sales in one day, and I don't know for you, but that for me that was huge, and that is also like the top sale uh, sales day every uh, every day. It's other than bowl, obviously. Um, and also, this happened. Like I said, the Germans were my friend, are my friend still, and I was actually number two in the in the German Mac App Store 
in one day. I quickly made the screenshots before I became third, fourth, fifth. <laughs> but <laughs> I was able to post this on Facebook. I even checked if there was a number one position. Didn't happen. Now, um, and th th that is basically the story of how I release my app. And nowadays, uh, I mean, I get mixed reviews. So these are two stars. But I must say that generally, people are, uh, are quite happy. And so I think that I, uh, at least I have the most five-star reviews. So I think that is very, uh, I'm very uh, happy with that. And I can still release, uh, release updates to make it a bit better. Today, I have sold over 1,400 apps in, uh, in uh, roughly two years. So that is 700 per year, which is uh, roughly two per day. Um, that, is not, that is not big. You can also see how much, uh, how much I made. It's one and a half thousand dollars. But uh, of course, you have to pay taxes. So uh, let's move on to the benefits. This is the most obvious one, right? And I keep, I, I, I keep saying it, it's not about the money. Because you can only charge a few euros per app. It's a really low, low ticket market. You cannot, I mean, uh, it's either people buying it for a few euros or nobody's buying it. So uh, I actually uh, ask two uh, euros nowadays. I started out with one saying that it was a promotion. I kept that going for half a year or so because it works. Um, and then I changed the price. I think I'm actually a bit in the low. Uh, I could charge more, but yeah, that maybe I would have less sales. Also, in my case, 30% uh, of that goes to Apple uh, because they host, uh, they host the app and they, may they want to make money, they do. Um, so yeah, there's not a lot, uh, lot left. And the taxes will amount to roughly 30 to 50%. I actually had to pay more than 50% taxes this year because I was just in some unlucky circumstance. I don't know. Uh, so I was calling the tax lady saying, it, do you think this is correct that I have to pay like 52% taxes? And she was like, she didn't really listen. She said, you should pay taxes. <laughs> and, and I was like, after a few times I tried, I was like, okay, thank you and uh, goodbye. So I just accepted it and uh, yeah. Clearly, it's not about the money. Unless you, are very, uh, yeah, you have a very brilliant idea, then it maybe will make, make you a lot more money. What I do think is a very important aspect is learning. You get to do stuff you don't normally do in your own role. So I got to do UI design. I got to do customer support. I maybe even got to do a bit of marketing, like uh, underselling my own app and stuff. Um, this, uh, this is stuff that is a nice distraction, uh, I think, from your, from your regular day, do day job, and you get to do stuff that you don't usually do. It's interesting. And to be honest, you also appreciate people a bit more when, for example, y if you see uh, uh, an excellent UI design, I think nowadays I think I can appreciate it a bit more seeing how I struggled with it. If I use techniques we use at Ball uh, and I practice with it, I get better overnight, which is, I think, very nice. In this case, I think it was mostly uh, using REST interfaces, but in general, if you, if you just take up stuff we have at Ball, for example, let's say Spring Services, and you, uh, you build your own stuff with that, you just get better. And I think that is keeping me uh, very motivated. Really applying technologies helps. So other than um, tutorials who did that are usually uh, bent on, what happened? Bent on showing you something on on uh, showing you something that works because that's a tutorial, right? They want to show you how to do something. Uh, I think that applying real technology to your own problem is seeing what it's about, where it fails, and uh, what you can do to prevent it. I think that is definitely a better uh, better way to learn than to just learn stuff uh, that somebody prescribed to you. You always have more use cases, so I always have ideas for apps in my head, and I try to, I mean, this is obviously the only one that I really released, but I've worked on a lot of ideas, 
And I think that uh, having these use cases always make for very nice technical problems, which you can then try to solve with some technologies at hand. You just, you're just more engaged. And you can easily integrate stuff into your own software. So if you have a software package lying around which you wrote, you know it inside out, and you can just branch off uh, uh, something and try, try out something, and then r maybe later throw it away. It doesn't matter, but at least you played around uh, with the technology. In the last few months, just to give you an example, I was able to, uh, to play with these kind of things. They are not very, uh, very fancy, but uh, I, I just got to play with them, try out a bit, and then throw code away again. Motivation and engagement. Now, everything we uh, do at Ball is very interesting for me, uh, is a bit more extra interesting for me because uh, I, I always think, okay, can I maybe use this, uh, use this for my own projects? So for example, if I see everything we do so professionally, like uh, metrics, deployment, uh, running web services, stuff like that, it just uh, always gets me a bit, like uh, it gets me this tingle, like, okay, maybe I can use this, maybe not. And the other way around, if I uh, see something on the web, uh, which I was actually like, investigating for my, own, uh, for my own stuff, then uh, I can maybe also apply the ball and maybe mention in a meeting one day, okay, I think we should do it like this. I saw this somewhere. Sometimes it works out, som sometimes it doesn't, but it's, uh, I think it's nice. So there's basically this back and forth uh, of technologies going on where I can take something home or I can take something to work, uh, and that's very uh, motivating for me. You have more diverse work to spend your time on. So diversity is for me very important. And I think that, uh, that it actually helps me to keep, uh, to keep, uh, to keep motivated. <coughs> and I can do whatever the bleep I want, uh, which is also very refreshing from time to time. Satisfaction. Now, building the app uh, you want is really, uh, I found it really satisfactory. And also, um, you gather feedback from people who actually use it. So you find interest not only for yourself, you didn't only run it on your own computer, you actually went to people and said, okay, here's this piece of software. And they actually, most of the time, they find it very good. Sometimes they have some useful, uh, useful improvements, but it's really, uh, it's really nice to see that you're actually contributing something. And there's a bit, uh, there's for me, there's a big se sense of pride in tying up uh, loose ends because I can very easily start a project on my own computer, uh, but actually releasing something, that's basically what I said to that uh, girl I was dating. I said, okay, this is way different. This is different stuff. And I, uh, I, I got a big sense of proud, uh, pride out of uh, putting it out there, uh, tying up all the ends, making sure that it was configurable, that people could actually use it was great. So, if by now you are thinking, hmm, maybe, uh, maybe that thing I'm searching for, maybe I can do that, then I have a few, uh, few ideas about uh, how I think you can start with it. First and, and foremost is find something you would like to have, because uh, this is, you have to get enthusiastic before you can really make make a big effort, right? So why not start with something you would like to have? Oh, sorry, that was this a little bit. What people usually forget is that instead of, and I also did that, instead of making something new, you can also try to make a better version of something. So people are always trying to think of a brilliant idea that hasn't been invented yet. Well. There are not so many, I think. But there are many software things where I think, yeah, I would have done this differently. And I think that if you uh, keep that in mind, then you see a lot of opportunity uh, to make uh, stuff you want. Ah, I already said this. Choose something you're passionate about. It's very important. Start low profile. It's very nice to talk to people uh, who um, uh, to, uh, wh what your idea is, but honestly, 
if I tell people that I can change the lights from my Mac, people are usually like, don't you have a phone? Like, is, it, uh, is it something you really need? No, it's not. It's not what it's about. Uh, but I, I, liked, I wanted to have this. Uh, so, and there are apparently more people uh, who are interested in it. So there is, a, there is a big market because you can just reach uh, the whole world with your software and only a few uh, very low percentage of the people have to be interested for you to have a market. I keep on uh, screwing up the bullets, sorry. It, ap it appears here and then it's not there. Um, don't get too attached to your project. So it's at some point it gets very uh, um, uh, important to stick stick to your pro uh, project and also do the things that you that you are not so interested in maybe uh, to actually be uh, able to release it. But before that, if you are not uh, engaged enough, just just say, okay, I learned a lot from this project, uh, but I'm going to kill it off. For example, you did talk to someone and you found out that it's actually not so interesting as you thought. Well, then there's no need to, uh, uh, to keep on going with it, I think. This is also, yeah, I just said this. Uh, and don't think about the money. Uh, I mean, obviously, I would also like to make a big pool of money from this. Um, and it, uh, yeah, if, if I can make a few upgrades and that happens, then that would be nice. But I, I, I get more motivated by, uh, by the stuff I learn from it, for example, and how people react uh, to me putting it out there. Space for your project. So if you're going to do this, find a physical space. Um, you're not going to do it at Ball, maybe, but find, find a good space where you like to work. That can be the coffee bar around the corner, but this can get a, can get a bit uh, expensive. Um, uh, but <laughs> but uh, it's, it's good to have a good space. Then dedication, effort, and time. Notice that I didn't put skill here, because I think that if you have the right dedication, effort, and time, that you will get there. Uh, it might take a bit more time, but it's, it's important that you allocate for this. And then reserve some time for your work. So I actually work 36 hours. I find it very useful to uh, use these extra hours I have, like every other Friday, to work on some project I have. Um, that, that really keeps me going. I'm almost done. to find tools to support your project. So there's no, there's no need to go back to the Stone Age, of course, uh, to have to do everything on a very uh, old-fashioned way. Uh, you can just find a lot of good tools online to, to work with. For example, you can get free uh, private repositories, Git repositories at GitLab or Bitbucket, and you can just host your uh, project there, and you, you can just work as you, as you do at Ball. It's very nice. A free Agile board, so something like Jira, uh, you, that's also just available online. I w used to uh, try out Trello, but I recently found Fabricator, which was made at Facebook, and it's actually a very nice uh, open source uh, version of Jira, which uh, yeah you can just use and you put your issues in there and stuff and work with it. And then something that's not free, but almost free, I would say, if you need a web service, then uh, you can get one for $2.50 a month which which has quite a lot of hard drive space, quite a lot of traffic allowed on it. So you can just uh, host your project there. If you need a web service, I didn't, but uh, sometimes I play around with these things to, uh, to get, uh, yeah, to try something out. Wrapping up, it's a lot of fun uh, to build something you want. Uh, I, I'm I, keep, I keep repeating that, you know it by now. I think it's a benefit, I, I hope that I could show you that it's uh, beneficial to your, uh, to your career at Ball uh, and it's nice for your motivation to, uh, to do this. And I promise you, you won't regret it. Thanks for listening. All right, so we have five minutes for questions. Yes.
So how much time did you spend on this project? I mean, not in hours, but in, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so from when you started till, till now or? Till so, I I bought this, uh, so I bought these lights in uh, December uh, 2014 and I released the app in April. But honestly, in the first half of that time, I didn't really plan to release the app. So I was just, for example, the Python script was really uh, recorded at the end of 2014. But I think in January and most of February, I didn't really work on uh, on an app. So yeah, it's hard to say in hours, but uh, I, th I think that I was just invested for a few weeks very heavily, and that's what uh, uh, was most of it. Of course, I did some, I did a few upgrades after it, but it that was not uh, as big, I think. Yeah. Hi, uh, sorry. Hi. Um, so you suggest using something like Jira, a free alternative to it. Mm -hmm. But if you're making an app on your own, what would be the benefits of, uh, of using it? Uh, it's keeping track <laughs> of stuff you are thinking of. So I always have, uh, so it's basically putting it in software so you don't have to keep it in your head. Uh, and being able to organize and order uh, your project, much much like a product owner organizes your time, I think. Uh, so I think that's important just to get stuff done, otherwise you will be working a bit here, working a bit there. Uh, so it's important to see what, yeah, what you want to finish first. Yeah. So I think I have two questions. Yes. What happened to the girl? <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> She's still alive, <laughs> I think. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> um, did you have any impediments with uh, like trying to convince App Store, like um, any major ones? Mm. And also, um, did you have any difficulties combining your personal work with Bold.com? Like any limitations on what you could do? That were the two questions. Okay, so your first uh, question was, did I have any impediments? They are, they are known to be a bit difficult, uh, but honestly, this software doesn't hit any uh, trademark issues or anything. Uh, I think that you the only trademark issue I would have is I would if I would heavily use the Philips Hue uh, trademark name. I already read that I shouldn't do that in the uh, docs of Philips, so I, I didn't. But you can mention it a bit. Uh, for example, in the App Store, it's called Menu for You. Uh, you can do that. So that was, I think, that was the only thing that was a bit uh, borderline dangerous to do there. Uh, other than that, uh, no, not really. Uh, luckily, it is a bit exciting because if you if you uh, provide them with the app, they can say all sorts of stuff. It's like uh, they can shoot at it all, all they want, and that is uh, that is exciting. Your second question. Um, I th I think that I'm uh I didn't experience anything but I also didn't heavily mention it sorry <laughs> until now yeah so you can come legal is waiting outside sure yeah yeah no no I didn't I didn't have any problems I I did mention it a few times nobody uh, told me I couldn't do it I don't know I don't I also don't think this is a, I'm not building a competitor or I'm not taking time from Ball, uh, for example, to build it. So uh, the only thing sometimes, and that happens both ways, is that my mind drifts a bit during the day. It also happens when I'm working on that. Uh, my mind drifts to Ball. Yeah, that happens. I I'm only human, so yeah. Okay, so it's fun releasing your own app, but what happens next? Do you are you still excited about maintaining it, or are you on to the next adventure? So what I did was I marketed this as a simple way to control your lights, right? Everything uh, I get as feature requests that does not uh, fall within that spectrum, I can just say, yeah, sorry, you bought the wrong app. 
if I find it interesting, it's usually not that difficult, so I can uh, quite easily implement it. I do have a bit of an issue uh, because my code got dirty over time. I added a lot of features and I didn't really maintain it that well. Xcode is also not really fun to refactor with. It's not. It's not a good. It's not such a good. Uh, good idea. So I would like to release a new version. That takes a lot of time, uh, and that is something I failed a few times. So that's that is. I'm struggling a bit with uh, that, like the the evolution of of my of my code. But I would like to fix that. Uh, yeah, I'm still I'm still excited. Yeah. All right. That's it. Uh, no. It, it does, uh, so it does uh, make me money, um, and uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Richard Stallman is in the room, uh, hey, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, no, uh, and there also, it is well known that if you open source a project that uh, 10 people immediately will release it to the App Store. Uh, this is known in other projects, so that is a good motivation not to do it, I think. If you want to see the code, uh, yes, come by. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the lights are on. That's it. Thank yeah. you very much. There's a.